I mentioned uh, a few other videos alluded to um, existential horror or <laughs> existential panic. Um, when I'm out on my bicycle sometimes, uh, thoughts are really not so good, or the non-thoughts are really not so good, and there's, there's, there seems to be some sort of uh, place where your thoughts start to go, and you sort of go, whoa, 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 that's a bit weird, that's a bit terrifying as a matter of fact, and you just steer clear of that part of your head. Um, I think that that's some sort of zone inside of us all in which the primal fear or the uh, existential anxiety lies, and I think that 99% of us, when we go near that, we just say, okay, okay enough of that, I'm not going to go near that anymore, and we don't really explore it anymore. Uh, most people, I think, don't really feel the need to do that, and that's okay. But I think a lot of people who do come up against it and start to think about what it all is, what that terror is, or uh, somebody who comes across it involuntarily because of a trauma or perhaps drug-induced or something like that, uh, tends to sort of put a lot of weight on it because they want to know what it is, but they don't dare go near it. So that, I, I wouldn't really say mystifies it, it but it does sort of... Um, makes it harder to study because if you fear something, you don't want to go close enough to it for it to attack you. So you can't really study it all that closely. I think studying things like the black arts or evil or whatever, terror, have always been more or less sort of verboten. Um, which, as I say, has the, the strange effect of leaving it unstudied and it's just assumed to be something that's there, this sort of anxiety center in our personality or terror center or... Um, existential panic center in our being. Um, but fear is, as they always say, the fear of the unknown. But because people don't really want to sort of explore that aspect in themselves, um, it tends to look a lot more real and a lot more impenetrable than it is. But um, it's not really something that one should sort of approach without really thinking through. Uh, or at least one shouldn't approach immediately and without <laughs> proper preparation or whatever. Um, existential crisis is something that uh, uh, Zapfe, Petr Vesel Zapfe, uh, and a lot of other people have written about, and they've essentially concluded that it's insurmountable. Existential panic is uh, just something that is too big for us as mortal humans to ever overcome, and the best thing that we can do is to just sort of Never mind, don't go near that, don't try and figure out that panic, because that panic is the ultimate reality. Well, <laughs> there are people who have actually sort of dealt with existential panic, and, or existential crisis, or existential angst, or whatever. Um, and I, inevitably, what they'll tell you is, get close to it and try and see it for what it actually is, and it's not really as bad as you might think. In fact, it might be a necessary step uh, towards self-understanding, or better self-understanding, at least. Um, again, it's not the sort of thing to be taken lightly, but if it's the kind of thing that dogs you, and I've been dogged by it quite a bit in my life, uh, you can, I won't say get used to it, because that's not what one wants. I want to understand what it actually is, and, uh, and not really so much overcome it as to come to terms with it, I suppose. Uh, it can be done. Uh, you don't have to just sort of say uh, this is simply too big of an issue for me, and I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to face it anymore because it's it's just too terrifying and too unknown and too mysterious and uh, and I simply am not equipped to deal with this. We're equipped to deal with it, or we can at least equip ourselves to deal with it. It's just not a very easy thing to do. 